Hey everyone, Riley here with Dark Arrow. Today's video is all about material selection and more specifically, how to choose between carbon fiber and metal in an aircraft application. We've shown a lot of the process of designing and building our aircraft, the Dark Arrow 1. We've shown a lot of carbon fiber parts, we've shown metal parts, and a lot of people ask, how do you choose between these two different materials? Carbon fiber is really strong and lightweight. Why don't you just use it for everything? I want to answer those questions with some specific examples on our aircraft. Let's jump into it. When you're choosing between carbon fiber and metal, you're going to look at two things mainly, which is the geometry of your part and the function of your part. When you look at this, it's going to dictate what material you pick. So I mentioned geometry. That's going to boil down to the shape, the size, and the tolerances of your part. Let's talk about the shape first. So Carbon fiber is well suited for compound curves or parts that have organic geometry. So a good example of that is our spinner here. The spinner has compound curves, meaning that it's curving in two axes. So it's curving in this direction and it's curving in this direction. You can make a spinner out of metal, but carbon fiber uh, is well suited for these shapes. Another example of that would be our cowling. Uh, this shows I don't have a cowling anywhere near me. Let me grab that. So our cowling, again, has compound curves. It's curving in this direction and this direction. That kind of shape is a little bit tricky to make out of metal, so that's why we make this out of carbon fiber. Now, I also mentioned the size. Size is really critical when you're talking about thickness. So carbon fiber starts out as a roll of cloth that's pretty thin, and then we stack those layers of cloth up to make a laminated part. Uh, you can see that this cowling is pretty thin. It's just a couple layers of carbon fiber cloth. You can increase the thickness of your part by adding a core. So we put a honeycomb core in our carbon fiber laminate to increase the thickness and increase the stiffness. But once you go past uh, half an inch or so, you really want to start looking at metal. Metal's better suited for thicker parts a good example of that is just our engine block right here. So our engine block is a billet machine chunk of aluminum. We didn't make this, it's made by UL Power, but you can understand why they chose metal for the application. It's a big, thick part. You can imagine if you were trying to make this out of carbon fiber, you'd be stacking up hundreds, if not thousands of layers of cloth to get to this thickness and then machine it down into an engine block. There are other reasons you wanna, wouldn't wanna make that out of carbon fiber, but I'll save that for later. Another thing to consider with the size of your part is the size of the features on your part. So if you have small or detailed intricate features on your part, you're gonna to wanna to look at metal. Good example of that is uh, teeth on a gear or a little part like this. This is involved in our retract mechanism of the nose gear. Pretty small, intricate part. We made this out of metal. The reason you don't wanna make tiny features like this out of carbon fiber is because carbon fiber starts to break down a little bit if you're making features this small. Carbon fiber is made up of a bunch of bundles of individual fibers. You can see that in the weave pattern here on the side of the aircraft. So you can see that checkerboard pattern is actually the, the fiber bundles. As soon as you get features that are on the order of scale of the size of that fiber bundle, if you try to cut that out, those fiber bundles can fall apart. So you want to avoid making small detailed features out of carbon. You're going to want to use metal for that. One last thing to consider with the geometry of your part is what type of dimensional tolerances you're trying to hit. If you have really tight dimensional tolerances, you're probably going to want to look at metal. If you have looser dimensional tolerances, you can get away with carbon fiber. This is a component in the nose gear retract mechanism on the Dark Arrow 1. This is our upper drag link and the drag link mount. The function and interaction of these parts depends on some pretty tight tolerances on the order of thousands of an inch. So that's part of why we chose metal to make these parts is because you can define really precision tolerances in metal. If you notice the airframe though, most of these parts on the airframe, the fuselage panels, the way they fit together, those are more on the order of 10 thousandths of an inch or more. We can get away with looser tolerances on these airframe components, so that's part of why we use carbon fiber on the airframe. So to summarize, tight tolerances, metal, looser tolerances, carbon fiber. We talked about how the geometry of your part can dictate what material you're gonna select. Now let's talk about how the function of your part can dictate material selection. One of the most important things you need to consider with part functionality is what types of loads and stresses it's going to see in service. 
Carbon fiber is well suited for 2D loads, while metal is better suited for 3D loads. What do I mean by 2D versus 3D loads and stresses? Well, basically are the loads running in two directions, X and Y, or for 3D, you'd have also a Z component of loads. Here I have a sample billet of carbon fiber. This is a scrap from a plate we made at one point, and you can see how there's a bunch of layers stacked up to generate thickness. You look through the cross section there and you can see all the layers. This plate is really strong in the direction that we have fibers running, so X and Y, but it doesn't have much strength in the thickness direction because we don't have any fibers running in the thickness direction. The strength in the Z direction for this plate is primarily dictated by the strength of the resin. So this would be really good for making parts that have loads in two directions, but if the part had any Z component loads, we'd probably wanna look at metal. A really good example of that would be our drag link mount for the nose gear. I talked about this before. Let's talk about the loads. So the upper drag link reacts loads from the nose gear strut. So it pushes and pulls on this plate. This plate is bolted to the underside of the nose gear wheel well with six bolts. So when this drag link is pushing and pulling on the plate, it generates a Z component of force. So that Z component of force is then reacted by the bolts and this plate wants to bend a little bit when it's being held in place by those bolts. So that bending load would generate in-plane stresses in this upper plate in the X and Y direction. So we'd have three D stresses in this, in the Z and X and Y. If we had tried to make this part out of a billet of carbon fiber just by stacking up a bunch of layers and then machining it out to get this geometry, we wouldn't have much strength in the Z direction. So when this upper drag link pulls on here, it could rip out and obviously that wouldn't be good. So that's why we went to metal for this part and specifically uh, aluminum. Another important thing to consider with the functionality of your part is what temperatures it's going to see in service. Carbon fiber is well suited for low to medium temperature applications while metal is pretty good at some high temperatures. The airframe on the Dark Arrow 1 is almost entirely built from carbon fiber the airframe is only seeing ambient temperatures. It might heat up a little bit in the sun, but for the most part, it's pretty low temperature application. There are parts on the airframe though that are high temperature or might see high temperature. A good example of that is our firewall heat shield. In order for this to do its job, it would have to withstand a potential engine fire to protect the airframe and occupants from that fire passing aft. So we're using titanium for our firewall heat shield because of its temperature capability. Another good example of a high temperature component in the aircraft is just the exhaust pipes. These have to experience well over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. It'd be cool if we can make some really lightweight bling carbon fiber exhaust pipes, but carbon fiber doesn't really have that high of temperature capability, so we have to stick with steel for the exhaust pipes. If anyone wants to make me some lighter weight titanium exhaust pipes, uh, hit me up. I got a good application for them. But yeah, carbon fiber can't go very high in temperature because the resin matrix is what limits its temperature capability. The fibers themselves can actually go pretty high temperature, but your resin matrix is what's going to soften first. So we're using an epoxy resin matrix in our carbon fiber. If this heats up, it'll eventually start to soften and then you lose your mechanical properties. So uh, that's why we use metal for high temperature parts. One last thing to consider with part functionality and material selection is how is your part going to interact with other parts? Is it going to be bolted or bonded to another part? Or is there gonna be sliding or wear contact with another part? Let's talk about that. If you're going to make an assembly that's gonna be bonded together permanently, Carbon fiber is probably a pretty good choice. Our fuselage is made up of a series of panels that get bonded together permanently. Carbon fiber naturally can form some pretty strong bonds, so we use carbon fiber for that application. Metal is a little bit more tricky to bond together, so we have to make bolted assemblies for metal components, but that's good if your part is gonna be serviceable. So our landing gear, we need to uh, assemble it and take it apart for service. So it's actually pretty good to have bolted assemblies when you're making something out of metal. What if there's wear though between your different components? Carbon fiber is not very good in wear applications, so you wouldn't wanna make bearings out of carbon fiber, 
Metal is pretty good for wear or sliding contact. So things like uh, latches or gears. Uh, here's a good example of a gear in the aircraft. This is on our nose gear. Each of these little teeth has a little wear area when it meshes with another gear. So that's why we make uh, the gears out of metal. All right, we talked through a whole bunch of different criteria to consider when deciding between carbon fiber versus metal. Let's head over to the whiteboard for a quick summary of all these different variables. Everything summarized on the whiteboard here. This is really just a list of areas uh, when these materials would be good for the job. It doesn't mean that this is the only time you can use this material. We violate these from time to time ourselves. So going back to the beginning, how do we choose between carbon fiber or metal? Which is better? Well, the answer to that depends on what you're trying to do with the material. So I'll pose the question back to the audience. How do you choose a material for the job? Maybe you have some rule of thumb or guidelines that you use. Let's get the discussion going in the comments section of this video. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.